How does a movie producer view a screenplay versus how an actor, filmmaker, or writer views the screenplay, mm. what do you think? Well, I mean, since I'm not an, an actor or you know, some of these other uh, people, I can't, I can't necessarily speak to their process, but I mean, I think a producer probably is a lot more comprehensive in terms of when I look at a script, I'm thinking about a lot of different things. I'm thinking about all those things, um, specifically how, how they relate budget-wise and fiscally, but also you know how that you know the creative and the fiscal will work together. So, you know, I, when I read the script, I'm thinking about story and I'm thinking about the arc of the characters and I'm thinking about the conflict and I'm thinking about why are we telling this story. But I'm also thinking about okay, who who would I get to play these? Could I get to play these roles on this budget level? Like, what are some decent names? Who am I picturing in this? You know, I'm thinking about and if, I mean, I'm presuming in this situation that the movie's real. That's not just a script. I'm not just reading it for fun, but it's like, okay, we're making this picture. Like this picture's funded, Mark, read the script. So I'm reading it and I'm like, okay, how are we gonna pull off that? We need that this kind of grandiose house or, there, there, a good example would be, um, there's a project I'm working on right now called Lee Too. Um, and um, very hopeful it will shoot this summer. Um, the financing is getting locked down um, as we speak. Um, and a very cool thriller about these sort of two, I don't know, like helicopter parents, these sort of like wealthy parents. They've got these two 10 year old twins and the twins are, um, they're kind of like they're, they're, the parents are finding them hard to tutor. Uh, the boy, the, the, the boy's got like a learning disability and the girl's kind of too smart for her own good, too rebellious. And they're having trouble tutoring these kids and they, and the kids have their own language that they speak in when they don't want the parents to know what they're saying. So the parents buy this device called a Litu. It's kind of like a an Alexa or a Google Home device, like one of these smart devices, you know, it connects to the house, it can lock the door, it can open the windows, it can do all these kind of, turn the lights down, answer questions, whatever. And it starts, at first the kids don't like it, but then it starts learning their language and it befriends them. And then it, and then the kids start liking it and it starts, you know, they, they start, it starts tutoring, you know, the kids better than the parents can. And eventually the kids start pushing back on the parents a little bit and it starts overstepping its bounds. And the parents are finally like, we need to get rid of this thing. At first it's good, but then it starts to take, take it a little bit over the line. And by this point, the kids like love this thing so much that um, they secretly get another one without the parents knowing. And it remembers them, like his mind is in the cloud. Like it remembers these two kids. And the parents decide we're gonna send the kids to two different private schools instead of together. And the kids are like freaking out because they don't wanna, they're twins, they don't wanna be separated. So the Lee Too starts planning with the kids to take out the parents. It starts plotting with them to get rid of the parents. And it controls the house and it locks the door. You can, you know, so this whole big, it builds to this really big climax and it's just a really, really well-written script. So I'm using that as an example because when I'm reading the script and it looks like, you know, this is moving toward production, I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, this house, is such a major location we need to be able to, it's like a character. Um, the Litu, the voice of the Litu, what does it look like? The lights on it, it glows or whatever, is that gonna be a practical effect? Is that gonna be a post-visual effect? How are we gonna pull that off? Um, the casting, so you've got the two parents, you've also got the kids. When are we gonna shoot this thing? Because with kids you can only shoot so many hours. Um, so with their age group, maybe you get nine hours a day with them. Um, if it's during a school year, you can only shoot for say six of those hours and the other three, they're having to be schooled. Yeah, the set teacher has to be schooling them. But if it's in the summer when school's not in, as long as the set teacher's on set, we don't have to burn shooting time with schooling. So, okay, you know, summer is probably a better time to shoot. The so I'm giving you some examples, but you know, production design in the house, I'm looking at some of these things and I'm saying, you know, okay, we need this and we need, we need to dress the kid's room like this. Okay, who, you know, there's a very specific style. Do I know somebody who might be able to execute that style? It's very postmodern. Um, I've worked with a production designer that did this and wow, sound is such a big deal. You know, so I'm thinking about all these, all of these things as I'm reading it as opposed to an actor's reading it. Yes, they're considering story. I think everybody with some sort of creative, you know, position is thinking about story. Um, to some degree, but the actor is going to be much more focused on their role and the arc of their role, and the cinematographer is going to be much more focused. They're going to be reading and seeing something totally different. They're going to say, "Oh wow, okay, so you got a bunch of exterior night out here by the pool. Are we going to light the pool? How are we going to light? Are we going to light the water? How are we going to?" They're going to be looking at it that way. Or I see you got this shot that follows them through the house, and so they're going to want to talk to the director about how that. I'm thinking about all that stuff, but I'm thinking about like, okay, do we going to have the budget for those kind of lights and? creatively, if we can't pull something off, how are we gonna be able to 
you know, to make that, we can't pull that off with the budget or, or there's some other logistical circumstance that's gonna make that unreasonable. What are we gonna to have to change in the script to do that? And um, I'm also a line producer and a UPM, so I am, I'm breaking down the script and I am thinking about all of these things. I'm, okay, we need Steadicam to pull that off and we need, so I really do get down to that level of detail, but um, it, 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 to some degree, but um, I, I'm thinking about everything, um, you know, in one form or fashion as it relates to creative and fiscal and how those two things work together. And I think, I think probably a lot of other, um, I think writers are probably focused more on story and not a lot of them not necessarily on the logistics. And when I talk to them, I'm like, but how are we gonna pull this off? You know, like, oh yeah, well, so from a producer, uh, you know, producer's perspective, we're, we're thinking more about execution. Uh, well, I think a lot of writers just, they just tell the story they wanna tell and they don't necessarily think about how it will be done, which is fine. You're the writer, that's your job, just get the story out. But when it starts to become real, and then we have to start approaching how we're going to do it. Sometimes some things for logistical reasons have to have to shift. Do you think a lot of new writers don't see that just yet? Like that you really have to, once someone's been in the game for a while, they can really scale things back to one room, one town, one location. Uh, you know what? I, I find the people that, the writers that grasp it the quickest are, are hyphenates who have also produced or who have been involved in something other than, I mean, a lot of times, you know, writers, they like locking themselves in a, away in a room and just working by themselves. They, they haven't necessarily been part of the collaborative creative process, but the ones who have, the ones who have also directed or also produced and understand the exigencies of production, I think those people um, have a better grasp when I say, um, this is gonna be tough to do. Um, here's some ways we might be able to do it. You know, As an example, I just recently budgeted a script called Not Long Together, I think is, is fantastic. And there was a scene in it you know, one bigger scene where the guy shows up and it's a big, uh, a woman has died and there's ambulances and cop cars and, and there's a helicopter with a spotlight because they're looking in the water and things. And he's like, yeah, we'll probably have to get rid of that. I'm like, well, so there might be a couple ways that we can do this if we have a decent enough. I said, you know, a couple cop cars, I know what they cost to rent. I know what ambulances cost to rent, you know, you know paying like three fifty a day for picture vehicles. Um, some caution tape and a few background actors walking through, making it look busy. I said, your biggest issue is your helicopter. Um, but we might be able to get like a scissor lift and you know, a 5K or something and do the spotlight and then license a stock footage shot of a 4K stock footage shot of a police helicopter and just cut to you know, him and they're like, yeah, no, we could do that. I'm like, because a stock footage shot, you could license that for 150 bucks. Go on Getty Images and you know what, we did. And we're like, well, look at all these great 4K helicopter shots and you cut that in and you can get your helicopter and you can have a few cop cars and a few ambulances and you know whatever and it'll probably cost us this this much you know maybe we can do it for you know whatever thousand how many you know however many thousand dollars and they were like oh yeah, yeah that's actually so coming up with say creative solutions sometimes it's changes to the script or sometimes it's like it might not be how you're thinking but here's another way we can do it and that's an example and he was like yeah oh this is awesome okay great done 